Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity and having me on this interesting uh, panel. Uh, myself, I'm Ahmed Abdo. I'm based in uh, Dubai and I'm working for uh, ABB company. And um, ABB is uh, 100, more than 100 years old company in the field of uh, electrification. We uh, went through all the digital uh, uh, innovation and industrial revolution till we reach now the field of uh, electrification of vehicles, uh, cars, and trucks. I'll be very uh, quick in the presentation. Uh, we have many topics uh, I will try to touch today. So I'll be very quick jumping uh, in the slides. And please, if you have any topic you feel it's more interesting or you have more questions, keep it in the Q&A. Part of our uh, main vision in ABB is to achieve the zero emission uh, reality globally. And as mentioned many times in the previous uh, presentations that uh, transportation is playing a big role in, in this uh, greenhouse gases and especially in our region where we are not a very big industrial region. So uh, I think this percentage of 24 or 25 could be more uh, as a value of the CO2 emission in, in our uh, uh, Middle East and uh, Africa, uh, Africa region. So uh, our role mainly is to help the, or to simplify the electrification of the fleets, whether we look for small vehicles or uh, big buses, trucks, uh, fleet management, and so on. So um, our journey in the, the electric um, charging network uh, uh, journey is started more than uh, 10 years now, it's uh, started in 2010. We were the first installer for uh, the DC high uh, fast charger at this time, 50 kilowatt. At 2010, one of our ABB companies uh, started this project. Going forward at 2016, we were the first uh, developer for the uh, e-bus charger with partnership with one of the biggest OEM in Europe, which is Volvo. And going forward, we are the first bi-directional manufacturer for uh, electric uh, chargers where you can uh, use your car in a very simple way as a big power bank where you can use it to not to charge it from the network, but to recharge again back this energy to the network in case of crisis or uh, high uh, big demand in some countries and, and so on. Going to 2021, uh, we launched uh, the fastest charger uh, globally, the Terra 360, which give the highest charger power available uh, in the market. And in 2022, we have the biggest charger for uh, electric uh, bus fleets. Also, we are um, a founding member in the biggest international organization, which write and uh, develop the standard. So we are a founding member in Charin. Uh, community. We are founding member in Shadimo Alliance, and we are a founding member in the Open Charging Alliance Protocol, where we are uh, active uh, partner in writing and developing the new standard till it is unified uh, globally. And um, we are not only a manufacturer, we are also a developer and facilitator to make sure that uh, share the experience we have in the countries, in the networks, with um, um, let's say the developer of the uh, international license. Talking about the international standards we see in, in uh, globally, I'd like to touch on this point uh, because this is not very common or very uh, understood by many parties uh, is we have, we didn't reach yet uh, one unified standard of charging globally, but we see that there is international standards which is spreading very quickly among the countries in Europe, Africa, like um, the CCS standard. And we have a little bit tweak of this standard, which we call CCS1 standard for American, uh, North America countries. So these both are almost more or less the same standard with some tiny uh, differentiation. And we have some other local standards, which was developed uh, in some countries like the Shademo standard, which was developed only in Japan. And we have the CBT, uh, GBT uh, standard, which mainly uh, used widely in China. And uh, by time we see more and more the manufacturers and developers are going towards CCS2 because it's more safe. It gives a higher uh, capability of charging, uh, safer in the operation with the individual where uh, 
the user of the DC charging will not only be uh, a trained, skilled uh, personnel, it will be uh, my grandmother in the future, uh, my mother now, and uh, my wife and my sister, which they don't care more than treating this charging as mobile charger. They need to plug and play without any care about the safety or uh, operation. So uh, the more we go into developing the standard, we look at the simplicity of charging and uh, developing a safe environment for all the, the, the users and operators. This is why we see uh, in AVB, we are a partner with the majority of the um, global manufacturers and OEMs uh, globally. Also, we are partner with uh, the biggest uh, charging network uh, all over the world. So when we look at the zero emission uh, city, we are not looking only, as uh, Dr. Ahmed said, we are not looking only on the e-buses. No, this bus is part of the full picture. So we are looking on, uh, looking also to fleets. We are looking to uh, parking areas. We are looking to in, um, individual housing. We are looking into uh, overnight charging at houses, could be destination charger at malls, hospitals, works, and so on. This is all. Uh, the infrastructure network of the uh, electric charging, which we look at uh, all in all. Um, in this slide, I'm uh, just giving, uh, I just added while I saw Dr. Ahmed is mentioning the difference between uh, the saving energy saving and consumption uh, between different type of uh, application like e-cars or hydrogen or diesel cars. Uh, very quickly, it's uh, well proven and well known that the electrical cars are having the highest performance from generation till uh, consumption, it reached to 70 to 90% from uh, well to wheel, as, as we call it. Hydrogen, there is many steps of industrial uh, um, changes to move, to change the power to, uh, to um, hydrogen, then from hydrogen again to electricity to be charged, to charge the car and then use it uh, uh, by the motor itself. Diesel cars, we know very well uh, the disaster there. So uh, we just put it as, as a reference. As ABB, we have a wide range of uh, charging to, to, to answer the, all the market needs. So we look at a uh, charging network based on, um, from the application point of view, how long or how, how, what is the time needed or the time available for the car to be charged. So we have the two big families of charging, which is AC chargers, which is the overnight chargers, the slow chargers, where you have, could be a very limited uh, availability in the network, or um, you have longer time to stay uh, with your car for charging, could be mainly a home application where you can leave your car for seven, eight hours at night, where there is less uh, high availability of power and less uh, consumption at home, you can use such application. Then we move to the bigger family, which is the DC chargers, which we are talking about charging from one hour up to minutes based on the application for both um, uh, individual cars and, and buses. So our offering is not only limited to, or, uh, uh, to chargers, but we are looking for the charging um, infrastructure all in all, starting from uh, the modification on the network, and this is the main challenge which we see uh, all over the countries. We know very well uh, Middle East and Africa, they have their own dynamics in business. We have a different culture, we have a different infrastructure setup, we have a different environment. We are the, the harshest environment in uh, globally. Yani we are the only desert uh, for the Middle East. The, we have all the factors which can fail any mechanical um, device. We have uh, high humidity, we, we are near to the beach, we have high salt, we have, uh, which will lead to corrosion, sandstorms, uh, very high uh, pollution in the environment, direct sun uh, majority of the year. So all this is simply uh, affecting any, any environment. So from our experience, we look at the network starting from development, the existing uh, medium voltage and low voltage network in every site, then the charging infrastructure itself, then the software, and the digitalization combined with the charging because you are not able to have a reliable network, um, charging network or a fleet management without being able to completely monitor and operate uh, such network. So this is the network end-to-end -end from generation 
tell consumption by by the cars where abb is having a complete solution uh, for every stage in this network where we can find a customized solution to be able to support the decision maker what is the easiest and the cheapest solution to help you to upgrade your um, network and why we refer to the standard in the previous uh, slide because the more you have a unified standard in your country the more you will be able to increase the utilization factor uh, uh, of the charges which simply means that the roi will be uh, easier so if i have a standard uh, one standard in in my country it means cars buses trucks, fleets in the future will be all following the same, same standard. So in, in, in a very nutshell, uh, if I put an investment of 10, 15 charger on a highway, for example, it will not be only used by buses. I can, only, I can also uh, use this uh, charger at its free time to rent it to, to taxi, to uh, taxi fleets, to uh, private car fleets, whatever. So this means that I can generate more money and reduce the amount um, the, reduce the ROI time where I can recover my investment. This is one of the pains we see in, in the decision making of uh, how fast or how easy I can convert to electric uh, fleets. Also, another part is the upgradability that should I plan for what I have now or should I look at the future? This is why all of our products are uh, upgradable. So you can plan something now and you can look for the future. So you can start with the minimal requirement and with the minimum effort, you can upgrade your network. For if we focus on the electrical buses landscape, we look simply on what is the lifetime and what is the daily experience of the bus. Buses starting from a depot, from a garage where it's 100% uh, charged inside the garage, and then it go to make its own tour inside the city. So here we have uh, two decisions. Um, First, how I will charge my uh, truck or my bus before it leaves. We have different techniques of charging. It's based on uh, how fast I need to charge my, my buses, what is the capacity of my buses, and what is the available power in, in, uh, in this area. If it's an old um, uh, parking or it's a new one already designed to host electric fleets and electric chargers. On the other hand, we look at the charging, uh, opportunity charging, where every bus is uh, need to top up its uh, chargers on the way to continue its trip. So it's not easy for a single bus to take a complete tour all the day with the same uh, a single charge where he get on the uh, debut charging. Uh, if we look at our experience globally, we have your, in Europe a very strong um, um, references in Germany, Sweden, the UK, uh, France, uh, I think everywhere in Europe. Also, we have in uh, ABAC uh, Asia region. And if I look to Middle East Africa, we have uh, a very strong reference in Qatar, which is uh, a Genesis record um, project for the biggest um, electric fleet globally outside uh, China. We're talking about 700, charge, 700 buses and more than 1,300 charging uh, points. So it's completely electrifying of Mwasalat uh, project before the World Cup. It's already operating now. It was all supplied in less than one year. We have also in Dubai, uh, with, the, with coordination with the RTA, another project for uh, bus electrification where we test uh, many buses to check which buses are having the best uh, performance for such environment. And we have also a good reference in Kenya with uh, a very smart company called Obibus, where they their main target is to convert existing fuel um, buses into electrical buses. So they are not only uh, importing complete buses, but they convert buses and uh, trucks in, in, in Kenya. If I go back again for the charging uh, infrastructure for buses, um, you have two options, either to have a huge uh, uh, battery capacity inside your buses, and it means that you are um, losing the capacity of passengers inside the bus. So the more uh, battery you have, it means theoretical longer distance you have, or you have optimized based on a study uh, uh, where you understand 
how to operate my fleet, what is the optimum power I need, where I can uh, boost my charge, where I can add extra charge on the way. So ideally, what we have is um, where we see a majority of the countries are doing is um, having a full charge at the depot based on the available capacity of the batteries and you on the way, in some stops, the bus are taking a boost or an extra charge to be able to continue. So for example, it go out from the depot at 100, it reach the next stop at 70%, and then it in go from 60 to 80 or from 70 to 90 based on the plan, and then it continue uh, its journey. All this is under the name of uh, fleet management. This fleet management where we always uh, advise uh, the operator or the decision maker that um, there is many factors which change the performance of the car. And this is the lesson which we learned in many cases um, inside uh, from the projects we have in the Middle East. So usually the declared power of the buses that this bus is X amount of kilowatt, it can drive this amount of distance. This is theoretical calculation. There is many factors affecting this. What is the temperature in the country? What is the outside temperature of the bus? Uh, what is the, the temperature which we need to keep inside the bus? Because the, more, the biggest consumer of every, uh, the power, the biggest consumer of power in the bus is usually the air condition. How many times the bus is stopping? What is the capacity of people inside the bus? Every time the bus stop, it open the door, cold air go out, people with a higher temperature go in. Uh, air condition need to do more effort to keep the inside uh, temperature as the set temperature. So it means it consume more energy. So many factors are affecting how long is the distance the bus will be driving? What is the capacity of air inside the bus? Is it uh, a, low, uh, a low or high um, uh, bottom uh, buses? So many factors are affecting the performance, driving performance inside the city. Is it crowded road or a straight uh, road without any uh, crowd? I'm just driving straight distance without stop. So this is always we advise countries before going for a big project, try it a pilot. Get these buses, get three different manufacturers, ask them to do a pilot in your country, check the average time of the charging they need, the performance in your temperature and so on. This is the best advice we always give to um, operator and uh, decision makers. And we always recommend go for international standard, don't close or limit yourself to a local standard, which will limit your options in the future. You are building an infrastructure for now and for the future. The lifetime of the bus could be 15 years. So in this 15 year, you might add new buses. It should use the same standard. If you use a local standard or a certain bus manufacturing standard, this will always limit you that you have to buy maybe the same bus or the same limited, um, uh, let's say, old technology because you only have this infrastructure. Otherwise, you will keep building different infrastructure for every bus you will come and this is impossible to, to be happened. So here I'm sharing one uh, interesting experience we have in Germany, in Hamburg. This is an old um, uh, old bus uh, station. It's a normal buses and they decide to convert it to electric buses. And one of the main challenges we have that there was no enough space to install the chargers. So uh, referring to what I was saying in, in previously that uh, we, are, we are having different capabilities, not only the chargers. We did completely renovation for the uh, electric room, we use that space on the top of the, of the, on the rooftop, we changed our design to be compatible with the requirement of this station. So we fixed all the charging network on the top and we have only cables uh, laying down to uh, the chargers. And this is a, a real picture from uh, the station. In this solution, we provided everything from AV, it was uh, the medium voltage transformers, uh, low voltage panel and the charging and the complete fleet management and operation um, software. This is uh, the world's largest electric bus infrastructure project uh, as per Jens record it, in Qatar. This is, as I said, 740 uh, buses now running, ready for World Cup, already uh, tried. We learned a lot in this project. Qatar is a very harsh environment from temperature, humidity, soil, uh, sand storms, everything is, uh, all the harsh environment is collected in, in, in one project. And uh, we, are, we are planning to uh, issue a white paper about our experience uh, in this project, just to share it with every um, utility or every government 
uh, representative before he go for this decision, he need to consider this stuff to avoid repeating the same mistakes uh, we see in, in such big projects. Thank you very much. This is uh, all from my side. And please, if you have any questions, please let me know.